Welcome to today's episode of Ashing's Health Show. Today I'm joined by a special guest, Marie O'Neill. Thank you so much, Marie, for You're coming very on. You're welcome. Yeah. very welcome. I'm really excited to have this conversation with Marie and find out all about your background as a nurse and midwife. Yeah. And today we're going to be really framing the context around like supporting our immune system. And mm-hmm. I'd love to hear about your own background, firstly, okay. as, a, as a nurse. Take us back in time. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, um, I grew up in Los Angeles, and my both parents were from Ireland. Um, so in the 1973, we came back to Ireland, and we had a pub. So my mom thought maybe I should be doing something. So I, I went off to England, and I studied um, nursing. I went to Ealing Hospital first, and in those days, um, um, uh, studying for, for nursing was three years, just three years. So I studied three years, but it was very much on the wards. Mm-hmm. We did some some block work, you know, like in school, maybe for about two weeks. Yeah. And then we went on the wards. So mostly it was very much hands-on experience yeah. in those days. Mm-hmm. And I remember in those days we had um, the Florence Nightingale wards. Yeah. Do you know, like yeah. there would be like eight on one side and eight on the other. And then you go in the morning and you say, good morning, everybody. And they'd all just, hello, nurse, you know. Yeah. Um, so it was very much a hands-on bedside nursing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that for three years. I qualified, and then I went to a, a midwifery hospital, which was close by, and we um, I studied then for a year. That yeah. was all you had to. Once you did your nursing, yeah, three years nursing, you could just go on then to do specialty specialize in yeah. midwifery yeah so that was i loved midwifery because it was really hands-on as well yeah you know and back then um, was it home births or hospital births what was it like there was there was home births because i attended a lot of home births yeah and a lot of uh, women at those days did opt for home births yeah and there was water births as well mm-hmm. and there were of course a lot of hospital births but i don't think cesareans were as um, prevalent then mm-hmm. do you know yeah there was much more hands-on uh, the midwife was the one that delivered the baby yeah you know yeah so it was a lovely time actually you know the nursing then was was really nice then I came back to Ireland and I um, worked in in Trilly in the Bon yeah. Secours Hospital and then I went off to America now in America you had to have um, another license so I went and I studied and I got my California license mm-hmm and then in each state in, in the United States, you have to have um, do a sit an exam for every state. Okay. So if you've done three, then you get a, like a, a an overall yeah. license. Yeah. So um, I did my um, nursing there, and I I enjoyed it. I was in a postnatal unit. It was very nice, uh, very exciting. But then I um, got married, and then I had my own my first baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, through the years, I was nursing. I went to New Jersey. I went to New York. And of course, I had to sit the exams for all those places. Mm-hmm. And um, I passed. And, and it was very, very nice to... It was completely different working than from Europe. Yeah. You know, and especially it was like 2005 when I was working in New York and had gone to all computers, mm-hmm. you know. And then when you go around to the different patients... You had everything on a trolley, but it was computerized mm-hmm. from the pharmacy. Yeah. So there was no, like, um, actually nurse input into the drugs. The drugs were actually done by the pharmacy, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, that was a lovely time, too. And then I came home then in 2013. And, no, sorry, 2010. And in 2000, uh, just after that, then I went to a nursing home. Mm-hmm. And I worked there for a little while. And I started thinking... Um, that I saw a lot of the elderly patients on tablets yeah, and a lot of them taking medications and not getting any better. Mm-hmm. And I started questioning things and I started thinking, oh God, I wonder if there's a better way. Mm-hmm. So I started looking into alternative medicine and um, I was thinking about doing acupuncture. And uh, then I, I thought that was really, that looked like really um, interesting work. You know, I, did, I went to a seminar mm-hmm. And then I went to a homeopathic seminar and I kind of was sold on that. Yeah. And when I first read about it, I thought it was just amazing. Like, how can something that is, there's nothing left of the substance, like, because, you know, homeopathy is a, is a different kind of a medicine. It's like more energetic. 
how can something that's nothing's left help a person you yeah. know get well or yeah. bringing them back to balance so then i spent um i spent four years going up and down to dublin from kerry and um i was like one weekend a month and i really enjoyed i mean every month i was saying i was learning something new mm -hmm. and it was like like my eyes were being opened for the first time yeah and my nursing background was very helpful too because I could compare the two. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah. I could see how um, the medical side was, and judge it then against the mm -hmm. the the home you know the homeopathy. Yeah. And then after I qualified there, I, I did that for um, four years up and down, and then I went and studied the Bach flower remedies. Yeah. And the Bach flower remedies are very it's it's a lovely. Um, healing modality because it deals with the emotions mm -hmm. and there's only the 38 remedies yeah so with homeopathy it's fast it's huge isn't it? absolutely yeah. huge yeah. yeah you can go on forever like yeah and you never never stop learning mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah so so, so, so how, how has your view of health evolved now say since your background in nursing to where you are now like oh it's evolved um i i realized that a lot of the times in the past, you know, nurses and doctors try and get their hands in on everything. Mm -hmm. We think that we know better than the patient. And like, you know, more or less, like we were like, uh, the bedside nursing was great, but then nursing in, in the later years, in my later years, nurses were more at the desk, you know, mm -hmm. and more in the office mm -hmm. and more like secretaries, mm -hmm. which I was kind of, had became disillusioned with, yeah. you know, because for me, all my what I wanted to be is next to the patient. Yeah. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be able to say hello to them and this and that. But we had moved nursing. I felt had moved away from the bedside. Yeah. And it was more or less the carers were the ones taking care of the patient. You know. Yeah. And um, so I I think with homeopathy, you see, and with the Bach flowers, I I feel that the health is more given back to the patient, mm -hmm. and because. You, um, with, with homeopathy and with the Bach flowers, you are dealing with the patient one-to-one. -one. And like with any kind of consultation, it usually takes about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, you know, for um, to be able to get, because you treat the person as a whole. Yeah. Whereas um, in the medical field, I feel that we're treating the person, um, we're treating the disease, and we're zeroing in on the disease or... We're zeroing in on an organ or something. Mm -hmm. Where is homeopathy and Bach flower remedies? It's dealing with the whole person, like the spiritual, the mental, the physical, and the emotional. Yeah. Which I think people are a lot more than just the physical level. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost like it's um, an evolution of like health as being like just being material or mechanical yeah as like or yeah. just this physical body and like so let's manipulate the parts that's to right kind of achieve health whereas yes. actually there's so much more to us there like, is there feel, is yeah and the thing is you see even like even in the medical field like you'll have an endocrinologist or you'll have somebody that's dealing with different um, modalities you yeah. know cardiologist yeah you know um so they're like a rheumatologist so it's it's breaking the person into little bits yeah you know, rather than treating the person as mm -hmm. a whole. Uh, yeah, because you know? that, that would be similar to me. You know, I trained as an occupational therapist. So yeah. So would have been very much in that kind of separate way of seeing oh, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like, you know, the person the person is a hip, the person is a knee. Yeah. You know, that yeah. kind of way. It's like the person, yeah. you don't have time. Yeah. To actually yeah, yeah. tell the person. Yeah. But um, like then as, as I trained in nutrition, very much like you in terms of like seeing the whole person and the whole yeah. health. And mm. that's been like my own personal journey. And, and has that been similar for your own self, like with your own personal health? And oh how that's evolved gosh, as well? yeah. Yeah, because um, like in 2013 now, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's mm -hmm. thyroiditis. Now, actually, it, it was I actually it was in 2013 I realized what I had. But I had actually had it for 20 years, a low thyroid, you know, okay. and I was taking medication. But it, was, it wasn't until I went to a functional medicine doctor that he told me you actually have Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's yeah. and then I realized he told me it was diet yeah. it was all down to yeah, diet yeah. and that I should give up um, the gluten and the dairy and I went on a whole different journey then yeah. because I started realizing that um, my health was really not a consequence of my genes necessarily yes. that I actually had an input into my health yes. that it was actually the, the foods I was choosing and 
the things I was putting into my body. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's such an empowering perspective, isn't it? It's like yeah. a radical departure from you have this condition, therefore you need a medication forever. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to, that's oh, actually, right. yeah. you know, to invite you to go, actually you have to go on this new journey and figure out like new ways of eating. Yeah. And I think for me anyway, I just see it for people. It is coming back into like our own personal, it per, is. personal empowerment, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And, and, you know, being able to own our own story yeah. as opposed to the outside government. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, I think what's happened over the years is that the power has been taken from the people mm -hmm. and that people give over their power to somebody greater than themselves. They, yeah. they think it's a doctor or they think it's a nurse or a specialist in yeah. some form. And they really don't. And, and to be honest, it's kind of been like that. Like, I remember when I was a trainee nurse in, in Ealing, um, you, you weren't supposed to talk to the consultant. The consultant mm -hmm. was the one that knew everything. Mm -hmm. And even patients would try and ask. And they'd say, uh, like, this is what I'm doing, you know? Yes. And it was like very much, um, they were like gods. Yeah. You know? And I think now with the, um, with the internet and with people discovering more for themselves and researching for themselves, mm -hmm. they, they are beginning to, sometimes you really have to diagnose yourself. I know, you know yeah. a lot of the times yeah. because um you uh, you can actually look things up and find things out for yourself yeah and i think that power has to go back to the person Absolutely. and that's what i like about homeopathy and about the bach flowers because the person has an input mm -hmm. in their getting well yeah because there's no point in in giving a pill or giving something and say it's all going to go away it won't i know because yeah. there there has to be a reason if your body is is so intelligent mm -hmm. That if you're feeling a pain, if you're feeling an ache, or if you're feeling a cramp, or any, anything, that your body is telling you something. Something is not right. And putting like a plaster over it or taking a pill, it, it's not going to go away. Yeah. Sometimes it drives it in deeper and yeah. other organs yeah. then are yeah. affected. And that's something you know? that I've been diving into yeah. my own training and my own teaching is like the suppression of illness yeah. and what that does. And yeah. I think that's something that I want to ask you is like, you know, your understanding of people now fear like acute illness yeah. they want to drive they want to get rid of it yeah kind of at all costs yeah. they don't understand no. where does it go yeah so is that something that you really understood then in yes. your homeopathy training well the thing is i didn't before because i mean like as a nurse you just gave the the medication yeah you know you were told if you have a headache give the pain medication mm -hmm. you know but then you have to realize that the person is having a headache for a reason is there something they've eaten mm -hmm. is it coming from the gut is it maybe stress yeah. You know, is it an emotional thing? Yeah. You know, you have to realize there's the, 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 the pain is coming from somewhere and your body is telling you something is not right. And if you continue like this, it's going to get worse. Yeah. But what, ha what has happened with medicine is just it's so easy and we want a quick pill to just pop it in and take it away. Mm -hmm. It's just like children getting fevers, you know. Um, the fever is a way of the body getting rid of the toxins, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And yet what we do, what what have been taught to do is give calpol. Yeah. Or give a medication that will, you know, uh, uh, reduce the fever. Yeah. But mm -hmm. what you're actually doing is stopping the body from doing its job. Yeah. You know, and sometimes then the illness can go on longer yeah, and so, go yeah, deeper. Yeah, so it's like we're replacing like the acute, yeah. with the chronic conditions. Yeah. And that's why we're seeing an explosion yeah. in people getting sicker younger and younger. That's right. And it's like what's going on like yes. something has to be going on yes. you know this, like our bodies as you say are infinitely intelligent oh infinitely intelligent i mean <clears throat> we like we have two immune systems we have the cell mediated uh, immune system and we have the humoral there's two different kinds and the thing is when a virus comes into the body the immune system immediately the white cells are um proliferated to go and attack whatever is there and it's not the virus it's not the bacteria that's making you sick it's your own body that's making you sick mm -hmm. because it's trying to get rid of toxins. Yeah. It's trying to push them out, you know? So the fever or the, the coughing, the sneezing, the, um, the sweating, um, the, any, anything that's it's coming out, the diarrhea, yeah. it's your body getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. And by stopping that, you're actually stopping your body from doing its job. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, but there are more natural ways to, um, to help you with the symptoms, yeah. you know, to get over the symptoms. Yeah. You have to allow your body to express itself, Yeah, you know, and wor working, wor working with it, isn't it, to express? Working with it, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So um, that's what I found that, you know, and, and I mean, I, I mean, I had three girls my own. So, I mean, when I, when they were small, I, that's what you did. Yeah. You gave them Calpo. Yeah. But as I became more, now that with my own grandson, that didn't happen when he yeah. was small. Yeah. I was able to give him homeopathic remedies. Yeah. And to be able to bring the body back into balance rather than having a side effect from a medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know, which yeah. oftentimes happens because you're suppressing the body without le letting it do its thing, yeah. do its job. Yeah. You know, so um, that's the journey that I've been on with, with, um, with alternative medicines. There's so many wonderful things out there. There's herbal mm -hmm. medicine. That's, I mean, these, these medicines have, uh, these um, alternatives have been around for thousands of years. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And they've helped the human race to come to this level. Mm -hmm. But what we've been doing over the last, I'd say maybe a hundred years, is is making ourselves more sick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And causing the body to be weakened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, uh, like what you're saying, that with suppression, when yeah. you're pushing it deeper, isn't it that infecting like the next generation as well? Of course. And of course, because what what it would, when, when you don't have a strong immune system, and you go ahead then and have a baby, well, your immune system is so low, you're passing everything on to your own baby. And then, you know, that baby isn't able to, um, like, survive without some kind of boost. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, more and more, I mean, in, in my day now, when I did the midwifery, we were very much encouraging breastfeeding. Breastfeeding yeah. was so important. Um, you know, because um, breast is best. Yeah. You know? Because everything the mother is given over to um, the baby is from the breast milk. Yeah. And then the change to bottle milk. And I know even with my own, I mean, I breastfed the three of them. But then with my last one, with Evangeline, I changed over a bit too quickly. Mm -hmm. So at three months, I, I breastfed her for three months. And then I noticed that she started going downhill. Really? Yeah. But she, I gave her, I started giving her milieu mill. Yeah. And um, she just wasn't thriving. She wasn't thriving. She started getting very sickly. And then I realized that she was probably allergic to the dairy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I had to change her to uh, goat's milk, mm -hmm. you know? And then with the goat's milk, she was much better. Yeah. You know? Uh, but um, you see, like in those days, um, you like in those days, you were like encouraged to have, you know, you, you know, have breast milk. Yeah. But then mothers, then went out to work. And mm -hmm. it became more difficult yeah. for them to, to stay at home with their babies mm -hmm. and to breastfeed. Um, so it's it's like a catch twenty two, you know? Yeah. Because every all the all the immunity goes through that breast milk. Yeah. Especially the first couple of days, you know, the colostrum yeah. and yeah. things. You know, it's very, very important, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's so important for for women to be supported to do that, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. yeah. But but the thing is, I mean, I, I find modern day women kind of like it's just oh, oh yeah, you know, I couldn't do yeah. that. And that's fine too, but the women should be supported to try and give the best to their babies. Then yeah. you know, yeah. give the you know that immunity that they need. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So, and what do you think of the current situation and, and people's fears around the virus and what they can do for themselves? Well, it's very important to, to um, first of all, it's not to fear, as you know, uh, viruses and bacteria have been for here for millions of years. Yeah even before we were on earth. In fact, we were probably made up of all these this bacteria and viruses. We're made up of it. And that's what we have in our gut. Mm -hmm. We have bacteria, we have all kinds of um, flora in our, in our gut. So it's not to fear it. Because, I mean, people who are, have autoimmune diseases, I can understand how they would be fearful. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, if you're a healthy person, um, nutrition is really important. Yeah. You know, Try and eat as closely to Mother Nature as possible. Try and avoid sugars. Try and avoid processed foods. Um, alcohol, you know, at to a minimum. Um, uh, you don't really need to fear a virus because, um, as I said, you know, I mean, herd immunity is like, um, it, it is getting that little bit of the virus in you. And if you're strong enough, you will fight it off. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you have to fear it. Um, but I said, I can understand how people like an in with comorbidities are a bit more fearful yeah. because they've come to that situation in their life where they've, they have maybe multiple problems. Yeah. So maybe 
but it's never too late. It's never too never late, too late to, to make changes. No, though, you can always make changes. Yeah. But I find like uh, in modern day society, we're like the quick fix mm -hmm. kids, you know? Yeah. We want and, and that's the thing with natural health yeah. is like things take time. Things take time. They take time and you have yeah. to have like patience and yeah. dedication to, Definitely. To, to like the long term outcome. That's right. I mean, like I, I mean, in 2013, I found out that I had, mm -hmm. you know, the Hashimoto's. So it was real when I once I realized, oh, it's my diet that's been doing this to me. Yeah. You know, I don't have to be suffering from this. Yeah. Then I've made a lifestyle lifestyle change, and it's been like a progress a progression. Yeah. And did you, know? you find that difficult initially? Because I think people yeah. here, like especially the stuff I share, it's like, oh my gosh, it seems so yeah. radically different to the way they grew up. You know. Yes. Did you find that? I did. I did at the beginning. I did at the beginning because you know you love your toast and your butter. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Comfort your, foods. Yeah, yeah, and your glass of milk, your hot yeah. milk before going to bed. Yeah. And it, it was a big change, but the thing is, it's only it's just gradual. Gradual. You just take yeah. little steps at a time. Yeah. And now it doesn't even bother me anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've even gone vegan now. Yeah. So it's it's just yeah. been it's been a you know yeah. uh, just a um a gradual pro gradual pro progress progression. you yeah. know progression yeah. So um, but it, it's never too late to make that change. Yeah. Never too late. You know, um, well, I teach um, healthcare support. Okay. So I have I have a whole load of um, knowledge in teaching people how to be healthy. Yeah. You know, I know about anatomy and physiology. I know how infection prevention and control, uh, care of the older person. I mean, those things I have done, so I can really help anyone that is, you know, that needs help in any direction. You know, about yeah. immunity and about how to get better, about their health. Yeah. And like you know, I think nutrition is the most important thing and that's what i feel you know um people should go to nutritionists like yeah. yourself yeah because a lot of the times you can be given medications or i mean remedies to people but if they are not willing to change make a lifestyle change yeah. a lot of times they're wasting their time absolutely so it's important to start there yeah um you also do like homeopathy for detoxifying uh, yes. vaccinations yes that's yes. something that's like concerning quite a lot of people that's right well um that's homeoprophylaxis and it's also, hu uh, well, actually the detoxing from vaccinations is called human detox therapy. And I study that now in England under Ta uh, Ton Janssen, who's from the Netherlands. He developed um, a method where you can actually give the medication, let's say you were on blood pressure medication. I Once I get the name, mm -hmm. I can actually detox the person from that the particular medication. medication. Wow. Or let's say women on contraceptive pill. Yeah. They've been on it for a long, long mm -hmm. time. Now it might take longer, depending on how long you've been on the pill. It might take a little bit longer, a couple of months maybe, or maybe even years at times. But you can detox the body from that medication. Wow. And then the homeoprophylaxis is another thing that was big in by um, Dr. Isaac Golden in Australia. And he treats people, he's treated people over the years, about the last 20 or 30 years, um, by giving a little bit of, let's say, um, a disease, mm -hmm. you know, just like in, homeopathically. And it just works because, because vaccinations work on the principle of homeopathy. Yeah. Because it give a little bit and, you know, that's how it works. So actually vaccines are, are fine. They work on the principle, but it's just the um, adjuvants and the other additives. What's in them? To, yeah, yeah, that's what the problem is. Yeah, but um, yeah, so homeoprophylaxis and um, HDT, yeah. so you can do those things. Okay, so it's very good. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So where can everybody find you online? Well, I, I, I'm still teaching at the moment yeah. at an um, adult education center, but if they want to find me, if they have any questions about finding me, I'm usually I'm on Facebook, they at the Homeopathy Haven. Yeah. And um, or Marie Corcoran O'Neill, whichever yeah. one, and they can always send me a message and say any problems they have, and I'll get back to them. And do you do like online consultations for people that are not local or? I know? would, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would do. Yeah, online consultations. Yeah. So I'd love to hear what's your biggest insight from listening to Marie today, and what's your intention with your health in terms of taking care of your own immune system and anything that we've shared today with <laughs> using homeopathy as a support for your holistic health mm -hmm. and really being able to take ownership of your own health. So mm -hmm. let us know right in the comments and thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Well, thank you, Ashley. Thanks so much. Cause oh, when you're smiling at me